engines are air pumps, and the more air we can get into our engines, the more power we can make. One of the most tried and true ways to get more air into an engine is by removing restriction. Now our whole intake system, apart from our new fancy filter setup, is pretty restrictive. So what do we do? Well, we replace it. We replace all of it. That's right, we're gonna do a bigger intake manifold, a bigger throttle body, we're gonna get rid of our restrictive mass airflow sensor, and we're gonna fashion ourselves a new intake. Then, we're gonna take this thing back to the dyno and see how much more horsepower all those mods will net us. I'm thinking this is the first time we're gonna break into the double digit power gain zone. Double digits? Double digits, 10 or more. I'll be impressed, I'll be impressed. Prepare to be impressed, my guy. I'm Zach and this is Money Pit. Let's see if we can hit them double digits, baby. So a few episodes ago, we took the Miata to the dyno and we made a pretty unthreatening, but altogether not too surprising, 112 horsepower. Now we've uh, we've done an intake, we've done an exhaust, we've done an ECU, we've done a few things that should get us a little bit of power, but we really haven't cracked in to the real power gain. So let's take a look at what I've got for the car. For our intake manifold, I've got this sick Skunk 2 intake manifold for the Miata. So this thing is a little bit bigger in volume and promotes airflow to make more power. Uh, it also looks awesome. It's generously cast, so you've got plenty of room to port the runners if you so desire, but I think we're just gonna leave it as is for now, and then we will be bolting onto it Skunk 2's throttle body. It's a really good looking piece, and it's a little bit bigger than the factory one for a little bit better airflow. Now, right now, this probably isn't gonna net us a huge power gain, but we're gonna turbo this car, and when we do, this will really pay off then, because we're gonna be pushing a lot more air through the engine, and the ability of these things to flow that air will be super important. So the first thing is always first, we gotta get all the old stock stuff off, and then we can start playing with our new fancy bits. <laughs> so come along on a magical journey of taking off old 25-year-old Miata parts. So right now we're just pulling apart some sensors, taking off vacuum lines, kind of nice. Kind of getting down to the bare intake manifold and then we'll pop it off. What I'm noticing so far is that we got a lot of brittle plastic. Two of my four fuel injector connectors cracked, so that's sweet. Otherwise, we're just kind of inspecting things, looking for things that need fixed or replaced while we're down here, and we're gonna get a good look at our coolant reroute to see how things are looking, make sure the, the hose isn't chafing where we routed it or anything like that, so should be good. All right, so we're about ready to take out the fuel rail, which means we need to remove the fuel lines, which means we're gonna lose some fuel. Now, if I had been thinking ahead, I would have removed the fuse or the relay for the fuel pump, and then I would have started the car and let it use all the fuel that's up in the lines currently uh, before I took anything apart. However, I didn't think about that, so here we are. If you find yourself in this situation, just try to do what you can to catch the fuel. I've got a bunch of uh, paper towels under the lines that should catch most of it. A little squirt there. You know, not too bad. There really wasn't much pressure in the lines, which makes me wonder about the old fuel pressure regulator. Probably needs replaced. Let's see if we can't wiggle this rail out of here. So, let's, let's go this way. This thing needs cleaned bad. Old dirty babies. Pretty impressive that these can work for as long as they do and look so bad. We'll replace them someday, but man, good work. All right, so I'm gonna jack the car up. Uh, basically, we're pretty far along, about as far as I can get on the intake manifold from the top side. I'm gonna jack the car up so I can try to get to the hardware underneath the manifold because those are the ones that are gonna be really hard to get to. Jack it up, get at it from underneath, and uh, everything will be fine. That's gotta be enough. All right, so there's a little stand uh, for the intake manifold, just a little support stand. Taking that off, and that should give me pretty good access to these lower uh, nuts. All right, so we got to all the lower hardware. I mean, it wasn't fun, but it wasn't that bad. And I'm on my last nut. I think this thing's ready to come off. Let's find out if I forgot to disconnect anything. Like, a, like I caught a fish? Yeah, I see it. All right, well there's that grimy old piece of trash. I got some cleaning to do, that's for sure. But hey, that wasn't so bad. That's basically like we're at the halfway point, right? Now from here on out, we're just putting stuff back on. Let's take a look at what we're putting on and compare it to this old trash. 
All right, so here are our stock parts, our old stuff, and here's our new stuff. So we'll take a brief look at the differences. They're pretty simple. Uh, in terms of the throttle body, the old throttle body is about 58 millimeters in terms of the uh, diameter of the opening. And the new one is 64 millimeters. So it's bigger, so more air can freely flow through. And then when you look in to the uh, manifolds, this one doesn't look like it's gonna flow too well. Looks a little, just looks a little restrictive. And then you look in here and you see these nice, big, smooth bell mouths that just look built to flow. And this, uh, this is a two-piece plenum, so you can take this thing apart and you can add like a spacer here to increase the volume of your plenum to suit your needs. So the changes between these parts aren't super drastic, it's just that these are a little bit bigger and they improve flow. Again, that's all we're doing here. We're trying to remove restriction and improve airflow. Uh, so these should do that pretty well. All right, so before we go ramming this manifold onto the engine, we gotta prep it, we gotta get it ready. We gotta put some fittings in for all our vacuum lines and all the things we need to connect to our manifold. So that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, it's gonna be pretty easy. So these are MPT boys. This wrench is too big, but look at me using it anyway. So we've got our vacuum fittings. We got our little nipples in place. Oh, you know what else we need to do? Nah, that'll be the last thing we do. Stick on the label. That'll be the icing on the cake. Uh, so this thing is ready to go in the car. Let's go slam it. We'll uh, drop our gasket onto the studies. And now, did this not come with new nuts? That is fucking lame. So the runners on this manifold uh, come down a little bit lower than the stock ones, and it's contacting the wiring on top of the starter. Uh, I've already rotated the positive cable from the starter, and that didn't quite give me enough, but I think we'll be able to make it fit. We just gotta do a little, a little rearranging. <laughs> Intake manifold is totally on now, and we're ready to focus our efforts on the throttle body. So we gotta swap some stuff over from the factory throttle body to the bottom of the new throttle body. So we'll go do that on the bench. Then we can put the throttle body on and start worrying about cleaning up all this stuff, putting the fuel system back on, these kind of things. We're getting there. All right, so this, this little coolant tray, and I think this is our idle air control valve, our idle bypass valve. Oh yeah, I gotta figure that out for a new intake. Mm, right. Oh God. You see, cubic feet of air out my ass and it doesn't smell like anything. Such a bummer, such a letdown. Ah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> on demand. Here's one way to make a nice new throttle body look like All right, this thing is ready to install. Let's go do it. Gorgeous, it looks awesome. We have a little bit of interference with our coolant reroute. It's got enough play to be fine. Might need to tie it down somehow though. All right, yeah, I think we're gonna be able to work with this. Uh, I'm gonna connect the coolant lines to the bottom of the throttle body. Then we'll start doing the fuel system. I think this is going to work. All right, now we've got our whole fuel system back in place, and now it's just a matter of plugging all our sensors back in, rerouting all our vacuum lines, and kind of just figuring out where everything went. I took everything apart kind of haphazardly because all this stuff goes together pretty simply, and it can really only go together one way. It's not like I can really plug the wrong thing into the wrong place in most cases, so not too much to be scared of there when it comes to plugging stuff back in. Just pay a little bit of attention, and you'll be fine. Broken connectors on there, pretty cool. Now one of the only things I have left to do as far as the manifold and throttle body are concerned is mount up the throttle cable and connect it to the throttle body. Uh, yeah, my hands are a little bloody at this point, but that's what happens. There's a lot of sharp stuff in this engine bay. Ha! All right, so now the intake manifold and the throttle body are fully installed, 
everything's good. So now it's time to focus on our new intake. Now, the truth is it's gonna be a little bit janky because it's totally temporary. Because we're gonna turbo this thing soon and when we do, our new intake will be useless. So I just bought some odds and ends, some silicone couplers and some pipe, and we're gonna make an intake that'll go over to our racing beat filter and it'll let us delete our math. So I'm gonna have to make a few cuts. We've got most of our bends in silicone. I'm gonna have to weld a bung for our new intake air temp sensor into the pipe. And I'm gonna have to weld a nipple for our idle air control valve uh, so that we still have a good idle. So we're gonna chop up some metal, do some welding, make an intake. Good enough. It's a little janky, I'm aware, but it's all right. Uh, it's certainly more free flowing than the stock stuff with the MAF, so it should perform pretty well, even if it looks a little atrocious. All right, so on the idle air control valve nipple, uh, I found a little AN fitting laying around. Uh, totally not the right thing for the job, but I'm gonna weld it onto one of the tubes and it'll work good enough. Where's my hose? It'll basically just kind of thread into the hose. <laughs> But I'm gonna open it up because it's kind of small. Originally, there's you know a lot more airflow, so I'm gonna open this up a little just to try to get, make sure our idle doesn't do any weird stuff. All right, my awful welding is complete and the pipe is done. It'll do for now. It's temporary. Uh, so now I've got a few things left to button up before she's ready to start up. I gotta wire up our new intake air temp sensor, then get that uh, plugged into the mega squirt, get it all set up there. And then I have to relearn the throttle position sensor position uh, in the mega squirt. Then I think this thing is ready to fire up, and then we go to the dyno. But we're gonna do that tomorrow. For f sake, this thing needs a battery so bad, it's so annoying. No big deal. All right, well I guess that means it's time to go dine on it. So we've got everything all dialed in and we're finally ready to make some max power sweeps to see how much max power the Miata can make now. Everybody out there, I need you to cross your fingers for me for that 122. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's not bad, that's seven and a half. Wow, 120.07 horsepower. We have seen the 120s. Still not 10 horsepower, but I'll take it. I'm in the taking mood today. I'll take anything. Okay, so we just got done dynoing and we made a blistering 120 horsepower. Now the car, when it came in today, made 112 horsepower. I wanted to make 10, so this isn't quite the 122 we were looking for, but still, an eight horsepower gain on a 112 horsepower car is still like an 8% increase, which is pretty good, statistically speaking. And again, it's really ultimately, honestly, not about the numbers that we make today because uh, we're getting this thing ready to turbo. So it's all too easy to get wrapped up in the numbers that you make and it's honestly, it's just not really about that. This car as it is, all 120 horsepower, absolutely rips, even without a turbo. So I think to celebrate entering the 120 horsepower zone, I'm gonna take this thing for a drive today. So 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it so much. I really do. Couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys next week. In the meantime, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Zach Job and follow Donut across all social media at Donut Media. I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye. <laughs>